Good afternoon and welcome to this press conference from the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Thank you for joining us here in the room. Thank you for watching on our live stream and a warm welcome to our panelists here today. Um, those of you familiar with Davos know that this is almost like a traditional press conference we hold uh, on the last day of Davos because it coincides with the World Trade Organization's ministerial meeting. And as such, it is my pleasure to introduce our panelists to you today. To my immediate left, we're joined by Johann schneider Amann, the Federal Councillor of Economic Affairs, Education and Research of Switzerland, who is also the host for the ministerial meeting here. And together with him, um, uh, to his immediate left, we're joined by Roberto Acevedo, who's the Director General of the World Trade Organization. And last but definitely not least here today on our panel, uh, we are joined by Susana Malcora. She's the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Worship of Argentina. Welcome and Minister, without further ado, over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this press conference at the end of a busy week for most of us uh, here in Davos. Once again, Switzerland invited to a informal meeting of WTO ministers, and I had the honor of uh, chairing this meeting. With 29 WTO members attending the meeting at ministerial level, we had an exceptionally high, and I would also say representative participation. I'm here, as it was uh, just mentioned, uh, with the Director General, Roberto Acevedo, as well as with Minister Malcora of Argentina, host of the next WTO Ministerial Conference in Buenos Aires in December of this year. Our meeting focused on two topics, the general trade environment and what we can do to make the December Conference in Argentina a success. Let me start by sharing with you my personal conclusions from the ministerial meeting, as we will publish them this afternoon. First, ministers highlighted the key role of the rule-based multilateral trading system in ensuring a stable and predictable framework for world trade. They stressed the importance of safeguarding the, the integrity and the benefits of the system and of further strengthening the WTO. Second, recalling the importance of trade as an engine for development and growth, ministers stressed the priority of working towards further integration into world trade of developing countries and in particular of least developed members. Third, ministers noted that protectionism was not the right answer to anti-trade sentiments and to concerns about technological change. Instead, trade should be made more inclusive and its benefits spread more widely. Fourth, ministers expressed their appreciation for the informal WTO ministerial meeting organized by Norway on the 21st, 22nd October of uh, last year in Oslo and the chair's summary from those discussions. S fifth, ministers also expressed their gratefulness to Argentina for hosting the 11th WTO ministerial conference in December this year in Buenos Aires. Six, recalling the important outcomes achieved at the 9th and 10th W Ministerial Conference in Bali and Nairobi, ministers welcomed the imminent entry into force of the Multilateral Trade Facilitation Agreement, a major result of MC9 in Bali, and reaffirmed their commitment to the implementation of all outcomes. Seventh, ministers underlined the need to build on the successes of the last two ministerial conferences and to deliver further incremental yet substantive results at MC Ministerial uh, Conference 11 in Buenos Aires and beyond with development at its center. To this end, they expressed their determination to pursue 
that engagement and political support in the lead up to MC Ministerial Conference 11. Eighth, minister, ministers undertook to mandate their officials to intensify their efforts in the different areas through a proposal-driven, inclusive, transparent, and timely process. And last but not least, further to the Oslo summary, issues most referred to by ministers for further work in the lead up to, to the Ministerial Conference 11 comprised elements of domestic support in agriculture, including cotton, a permanent solution for public stock holdings for food security purposes, other mandated tasks from Nairobi, fishery subsidies, in line with Sustainable Development Goal 14.6, domestic regulations and trade facilitation in services, special and differential treatment for developing countries and least developed countries issues, and among so-called new issues, e-commerce was confirmed to be of particular interest to many members, as well as micro, small, and medium-sized companies. Topics further referred to notably included non-tariff barriers to trade, investment facilitation, and issues relating to market access, rules, and export restrictions. We went through a very intensive and very constructive uh, ministerial meeting. I think we did uh, reasonably well and properly prepare the uh, ministerial meeting as of uh, December of this year in uh, Buenos Aires. And in the meantime, naturally, we have to do a lot of work, a lot of work, and Roberto Acevedo is the one who leads this uh, uh, projects and activities and uh, bringing people together and making sure that we will achieve a success in Buenos Aires. I want to take the opportunity to thank him for his uh, enormous engagement in uh, our common interests about multilateral uh, multilateral uh, about the multilateral uh, activities of uh, WTO and thank you uh, to Susanna one sentence we are so happy to get the chance to meet again in your uh, wonderful Buenos Aires please director general um, over to you uh, thank you. Thank you all very, very much. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, <laughs> let me start by, by thanking uh, Federal Councilor Schneider Aman um, and the Swiss authorities for hosting us today. Um, always impeccable. Um, 2017 uh, is an important year for the WTO as we look ahead to the Ministerial Conference in December in Buenos Aires. Um, in that sense, it is great to be joined today by Minister uh, Susanna Mokorra. Um, clearly, uh, trade is very high on the agenda, especially here in Davos. Um, trade, of course, has boosted uh, growth, has created jobs, have, li have helped uh, to lift a billion, a billion people out of, pov out of uh, poverty. Um, but, of course, we need to do more to share the benefits of trade, because there is a, still a sense out there of uh, people who have been left out. Now, I recognize fully uh, the concerns about globalization uh, and the need to respond to those concerns. Of course, the net uh, positive effect of trade uh, means nothing to someone who has lost, lost his job. Um, so we need better domestic uh, policies uh, to support people and get them back to work. Um, at the same time, we must also recognize uh, that actually uh, the major uh, driver of change is technology, is innovation. Uh, and attacking trade won't help this. Uh, putting up uh, trade barriers uh, won't help this. Um, I've heard a lot of talk here in Davos about uh, protectionism, uh, trade wars, 
Um, and that, in fact, would destroy jobs, that would not create jobs. Um, I am urging everyone uh, to show caution, to show leadership. Uh, we must definitely uh, avoid uh, talking ourselves into a crisis. Um, global trade rules uh, provide the tools for governments uh, to tackle uh, unfair trade practices, and this is the big difference that we have between uh, what happened after uh, the 2008 crisis and what happened in the 1930s when we didn't have um, instruments of a global multilateral nature like we do today. Uh, the trade facilitation, the, the, the WTO uh, is starting the year in a very positive note. Uh, the trade facilitation agreement is on the verge of entering into force. Uh, just today, I received uh, Nigeria's uh, ratification of that agreement. So that takes us to 107. As you know, uh, we need 110 ratifications to put the agreement into force. So we need just three more uh, to, for the agreement to enter into force. We expect next week to receive another one. So that will bring us just to two more uh, ratifications to get the trade facilitation agreement um, uh, in force. In addition to this, uh, we expect also the TRIPS amendment uh, on access to medicines to come into force next week. So that's another very big news. Uh, and this shows that members are delivering uh, on their commitments, and it means that we'll be able to start uh, delivering on the benefits of those instruments, those agreements. Now, members uh, want to build on the negotiating uh, successes that we had um, over the recent years. Uh, they want to see concrete results also in Buenos Aires uh, at the conference, at the 11th uh, Ministerial Conference of the WTO. A wide range of areas are being discussed, and I will not repeat them because uh, Minister uh, Schneider Amman has already mentioned all of them. Um, I think that at this point, uh, engagement is very high. Uh, interestingly, both uh, from WTO members and from the private sector. And that is something that, is, um, uh, that demonstrates how much interest there is at this point in time on what we are doing now uh, in Geneva. Now, we've, been, we've seen that again here in, in Davos, but if we are going to advance, we need to uh, redouble the efforts. Um, I will continue to facilitate the discussions among members uh, to move things forward. Of course, there is a lot of uncertainty ahead of us. Um, but my message uh, to the don't let that paralyze us. Um, instead, we need to work uh, even harder. Uh, ministers agreed today to increase their engagement at that level, ministerial level, throughout 2017. And this will be uh, essential uh, to strengthening and improving the trading system. That's what I had. So thank you all very much. And uh, we'll res be responding to questions uh, at a later point. Thank you, uh, Director General. Minister Malcora, uh, last year we had the pleasure to, to welcome your president here uh, uh, on this podium and also Argentina back to the global stage, uh, if you may say, and it looks like you haven't wasted any time hosting uh, the, the next WTO meeting. Please share with us what were your impressions of the, meeting, uh, the meetings this week. Thank you very much, and let me start by, by thanking the Swiss government and in particular the Minister of Economic Affairs, Education and Research uh, it's great to be here. It's great to be so well hosted. So thanks again. Um, you rightly pointed out we were here last year uh, with President Macri leading the delegation. It was a, f a clear indication only a few weeks after taking office that we were here to uh, connect with the world again, to come back and project Argentina, integrate Argentina, and, and to be able to take advantage of the opportunity of an integrated world in an intelligent manner. That is something that I want to emphasize. Part of that took us to a volunteer, and a colleagues felt that that was a good idea, to host the ministerial conference in Buenos Aires this year. And by the way, we also will have the presidency of the G20 next year. So this is sort of a set of milestones to uh, re-emphasize the commitment that Argentina has and the government of Argentina has towards a, a multilateral settings, towards a, a dialogue and platforms that provide the opportunity 
to come together and hopefully share perspectives. The meeting today, and I will say the bilateral meetings that we had throughout the week were very positive. Uh, we got an incredible support from many uh, countries, from many governments uh, uh, towards our initiative. Um, I think we have an opportunity, and I want to emphasize this, at a moment where things seem very, very gray, where there are concerns raised, where there are even potential threats raised, I think there are opportunities there. And the opportunity is to strengthen even more the WTO as an organization who is, which is owned by us, the governments, and to really work hard to agree to a common agenda that will take us forward. Many things have already been said on what are the issues at hand, uh, what is the, the process that we're going to start, but let me emphasize something. All of this is in sync with what we had agreed only 16, 17 months ago when we adopted, we all member states adopted the 2030 agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals. Everything is interconnected. And there we discuss that people should be at the center. We discuss that nobody should be left behind. We discuss that inequality was one of the drivers of problems in the world. We discuss that whatever we do has to be done in a, with a spirit of fostering sustainable development. This is the spirit that now we have to bring into trade. It's totally associated. Roberto clearly indicated how much trade has been an engine of growth. We all also need to add a, a fair and sustainable adjectives to the growth, and we have to work on that. So I'm convinced that we have a lot of work before us, but I'm also convinced that we have the chances of a successful meeting in, in, in Buenos Aires. We are going to meet again at the ministerial level in June, in the fringes of the OECD meeting. We plan to do again another meeting in September so that we don't get to Buenos Aires with too many issues still open, but we front load the discussions at the political level to ensure that this alignment between what our peoples are asking us to do, which is deliver for them, more jobs for them, uh, align whatever we do with the sustainable de development and make sure that trade is a key tool in what we do, that all of this comes together and then we are able to come with a final agreement in Buenos Aires that will allow us to celebrate with good beef and good Malbec. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will open the floor for questions now. Um, President-elect Trump could uh, unfortunately not join us on the panel for scheduling conflicts. So if you could focus your questions on the ministerial meeting of the World Trade Organization, that uh, would surely be much appreciated by the panelists here. We have a microphone, please, the two gentlemen here. Let's start in the first row. If you could state your name and organization for the sake of our online audience, please. So, um, Matthew Allen from Swiss Info. Sorry to disappoint you, but the T word has to come up. Sorry about that. Um, because it's what everyone wants to know. Um, we're going to have a new U.S. president in a few hours. He's talked about getting out of uh, TTIP, TPP. He's talked about worries about trade with China. Are you not worried that the U.S. is now going to start moving in the opposite direction of the WTO? And that can go to, to any of the panelists. Thank you very much. Let's take the second question from the gentleman behind. Uh, thank you, uh, Zheng Xin from Taishi Media China. Uh, two questions for the Director General. Uh, first, uh, about the China's market economy status. I wonder, after uh, December and now, uh, between December and now, uh, did you discuss this issue with any member states or did you receive uh, complaints from any other side? And the second question is about, um, you talked about strengthening the WTO. I was wondering, uh, do you have a plan or, or plans to you know, uh, enhance uh, compliance by member states? Because sometimes your dispute body decides these, these actions are against the WTO rules and the country promises to change. But finally, in the end, they, they, they doesn't or they didn't do that. Uh, what's how to make your 
you know, your rulings really enforceable, enforceable or, you know, what kind of actions you can take. Thank you very Thank much. You. So do we have any volunteers on the uh, Trump question? Director General, do you want to uh, comment on that? Yes. Uh, am I worried? Uh, that, the, w that uh, the United States may move in the wrong direction? That's a question, right? Yes. In the WTO and in other areas. I, I'm worried 24, per 24 hours a day as Director General of the WTO uh, because we have challenges all the time. But happily, we also have opportunities the whole time. I think that um, clearly, uh, from what I have heard, I have not had a direct contact with the, with the new administration uh, yet, uh, but from what I have heard, uh, they have concerns about uh, the trade uh, situation in, in many areas of the world. And that's, that's fair. I mean, everybody does. Um, I think it's about uh, dialogue. We have to sit down, listen to what those concerns are, and see whether there are mechanisms, whether there are tools, uh, particularly within the structure of the WTO rules and disciplines that can address uh, those concerns. But first, we have to wait and, and talk to, 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 to the United States and to the new administration, listen to their concerns, see what we can do about them, um, and, and take it from there. Um, but it's difficult to speculate what, what is that's going to happen, what kind of trade policy is going to shape up. At this point in time, I don't have any information in that regard. Um, the question about uh, the market economy status, no, I did not talk to anybody uh, in the WTO recently about that. Um, it is also my understanding that there is already a dispute uh, that has been initiated uh, by China. And given that the dispute has been initiated precisely about uh, the issue of the protocol of accession of China, um, it is my policy never to comment on a dispute that is ongoing. So I will not comment on that and I will not talk uh, to anyone about that. The dispute follows its course. Um, on the um, compliance of WTO uh, findings, uh, the, the dispute settlement body findings and recommendations, uh, what we do have is actually a pretty good record of compliance. Uh, our uh, calculations show that more than 90% of the disputes in the WTO have been complied with. Um, there are some very sensitive disputes in some areas, and it takes longer. Um, and as you know, the process has several steps. So after, even after the um, the panel and the appellate body have found that a member is not in compliance with the WTO disciplines, it, that member is given time um, to make the changes in their legislations, regulations that are necessary to bring uh, those measures into compliance. Uh, after that, if the complaining party is not satisfied, they complain again. And then you have another set of examinations. There was another panel, another appellate body review if it is appealed. After that second stage, um, if the party is still not in compliance, is found not to be in compliance, then the complaining party is granted the right to impose uh, measures that would be what we call retaliation, uh, sanctions that would go uh, to offset the effects of what uh, has been done or to encourage the other side to, to, to comply. Um, so there is a, um, a lengthy process, but it's a very, very quick uh, by international court standards. Uh, in fact, the WTO uh, dispute settlement process is the fastest uh, international uh, system that exists today. Um, maybe it could be even faster, but uh, given the sensitivity and the political um, sensibility of all sensitivity of all these issues, I think we're doing a, a very good job. Thank you. So let's get the microphone to the lady in orange. Um, Antoinette Prince from the Swiss News Agency uh, SDA. A question to Mr. schneider Raman and Mr. Acevedo. Uh, can you tell us something about the the idea of an international arbitral court? Did you discuss that? Which is a suggestion from the EU. I the I'm, I'm not sure I understood the question, frankly. Uh, okay. What do you want to know exactly? There was a suggestion from the EU to install an international arbitral court. Oh, on the, I, on the investor state? Yes. Uh, oh, yes. okay. okay. okay sorry. I, I'm sorry. I didn't understand what you were referring to. Now I do. 
Well, I had I was invited uh, this morning to a conversation that was promoted by both the European Union and Canada um, with a number of other uh, WTO ministers uh, who, who are present here in Davos. Um, I think this is this is a new idea. This is innovative. Um, the issue, as you know, as everybody know, is not an easy one. It's very contentious and polemic sometimes. Um, I think uh, the at the meeting, what I heard was that um, the members were very interested in understanding better what was being said. Some uh, expressed interest and said that they would like to understand a little bit more. We need to discuss more. Others um, expressed concerns um, because of whatever their perspectives were. Um, and my understanding is that, and then I, and then I had to leave. Uh, after that point, I had to leave. I had a, a meeting with another minister, and I had to leave. And I don't know what the conclusion was, but I, I would urge you to talk then to the uh, EU and, and, and the Canadian delegations um, to, to, to get the conclusion. I would surmise, I would imagine that the conclusion was, thank you very much. These are, these are very useful comments and input, uh, and we'll continue this conversation. That, that's my understanding. Okay, uh, Roberto Acevedo spoke about his uh, program the whole uh, uh, morning, and he attended our meeting a little bit later. And in our meeting, we did not elaborate uh, about this uh, topic. So we have a question from the gentleman all the way on the other side, yes. Thank you. So my name is Davide Baggi, Swiss uh, television, Italian speaking Swiss television. A uh, question for Mr. Acevedo basically is the same. Um, you say that, that uh, there is some uh, opportunity, opportunity given by the new American administration. What are these opportunity for the free trading in the world? Well, uh, whenever you have uh, challenges, you also have opportunities. And I think that um, when uh, a, an important delegation, like the U.S. delegation, um, tells us that um, in their, from their perspective, and I don't know if that's what they tell me, uh, we haven't had that contact, but if they come to us and tell us we think this system uh, could be improved, uh, that's good news. Well, let's talk. How can we improve the system? We try to do that all the time. But it's, it, I would be speculating if I could tell you uh, in which areas uh, there could be such a conversation. I don't know. Um, I think we have to wait and see what kind of uh, concerns uh, would come uh, from, from that side. If, if any concerns come, I don't know. Uh, it's tough to have this conversation because um, many of you put the question to me as, as if we were talking about facts. Uh, and mostly we're not. We're talking about suppositions, uh, speculation. So I, I really don't know, but that's what I mean when I say there may be opportunities is if we're going to talk about changes, if we're going to talk about this, this, this system, I think there is always an, an opportunity to improve. When, 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 is it, when is it an improvement? When all members agree. If all agree, it's an improvement. Thank you very much. Um, do we have any more questions? We might have time for one last question. Yes? Sorry to chase you across the room again. Here we go. Thank you. Thanks very much. This is a, it's, it's a slightly a Trump question, but hopefully Excuse not Excuse me, much. could you also uh, state your name and organization? It's Marcus Leroux from the Times newspaper in, in London. Thank you. Uh, Donald, Donald Trump's uh, appointee as US trade representative has said something along the lines that, that the WTO should not undermine national sovereignty and that uh, WTO rulings are not uh, religious texts, um, and I was wondering if there was a concern that that would create um, a poor example for perhaps smaller member states in terms of compliance and the authority of the organization? It's a difficult question because um, I hear that from every member. <laughs> it's not only the United States. Every member says, well, the rules of the WTO cannot uh, undermine my ability to regulate, it cannot undermine my ability to introduce policies, but at the same time, they have a contract that they all signed with each other. Uh, the first version of this contract was signed in 1947, and they have been updating this contract ever since. 
Um, and everything that we have, every binding rule, every binding commitment that we have was signed by all the members, each one of them. Uh, so it's a balance about uh, how much uh, the intention uh, is never to undermine the capacity of governments to introduce uh, regulations, to introduce um, uh, policies. Um, there are limits uh, which are in that contract. Um, now, sometimes uh, some members are not happy with the limits that they agreed before, but that, that would not be a first. That happens all the time. Thank you very much. Minister Malcora, I think you want to add to that. Yeah, if, if, if I may, uh, if, even from, from a national capacity, as Roberto indicated, there is always a tension between our national view, our sovereign view, and what we agree in the multilateral setting. The question is, are we all collectively ready to continue with our compact, I wouldn't even say contract, with our compact, that we are better off as a world coming together in the multilateral setting, recognizing that in doing so, you have to concede something. How far, how much, those are questions to be asked, no, no, no doubt about it. But, you know, the multilateral system was set after World War II. The US was at the helm of driving this process. When you look at where we stand, and this is not only WTO, it's a system at large. There are many things that could be done differently and could be done better. But the question is, are we better off with the system or without the system in a world where we see that tensions are there and arise every single day? So from my point of view, being here this week and seeing President Xi Jinping come out with his statement, as he did, is an opportunity. I mean, it's the first time a Chinese president comes to WEF, comes to Davos, just a clear signal, and it's the first time that you see a president of China, President Xi Jinping, being so clear, so articulated about a trade integration. So that opens an opportunity of a different type of dialogue among all of us. And that's where I refer at the beginning, threats also bring opportunities. Because when a part of our system moves, and of course the USA is a big part of our system, everybody recognizes that, that in itself changes the dynamics, and that in itself provides the chance to see what kind of a new dialogue can evolve from that. And what I found today and in these past few days is that people are willing, ready to engage in that with the notion that this compact is worth working for and improving. Thank you very much. Considering that this is a Swiss organization, um, it is time to close this uh, press conference. We're already running a little bit over time. Uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for watching. And thank you very much for my panelists today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all.